Today on Better Book Clubs, how free books undermine the very thing you love, reading. Everybody loves a free book, and there are lots of free books available online. But before I tell you where to find the best free books online, I want to explain to you about the problem of pirated books and how that has impacted the publishing industry. As an author myself, I get Google alerts pretty much every week that my book, which was published almost a decade ago, is being pirated on various sites. That may not seem like a big deal to you, but I want to give you a peek behind the publishing industry curtain today and talk a little bit about how the industry has changed over the past 10 years, making it difficult for the books that you might love to read to ever get published in the first place. I want to quote from an article by Douglas Preston that was published a few years ago in the Authors Guild Bulletin. The Authors Guild is a professional organization of published authors, and what Preston says is this. A recent study by the Authors Guild showed that from 2009 to 2015, the average income of a full-time author decreased 30% from $25,000 a year to $17,500 a year. For part-time authors, the average income decreased 38% from $7,250 a year to $4,500 a year. Full-time authors with more than 25 years of experience saw the greatest drop, a 67% decrease. So you can hear from those numbers that nobody can make a living as an author if that's the kind of money that they're going to earn for doing it. Why is that a problem? Well, what it means is that only people who have some other source of income are going to be free to write in the first place. So those are people who maybe have a spouse with a really good job or people who have family money, and it doesn't take too much to figure out who's going to be left out of that equation as the potential author of a book. Preston writes, the grim economic reality of the writing marketplace and the inability of many writers to make a decent wage are a far greater threat to freedom of expression than active censorship by political and religious groups, and the censorship of the marketplace is only getting worse. Now, I don't mean to suggest that pirated books are the only reason why this is happening, but Preston's argument is pretty compelling, and that is that what is causing the pressure on publishing is the ideal that information should be free. We have definitely come to believe that. Think even about the video that you're watching now. I'm creating this content totally for free to share with you. And the fact is that this platform is making money off all of those content providers who are providing content for free. Now, there are some people who are making money from their content, but most people are making nothing. They're just doing it for fun, because it's enjoyable, because they have information to share, and not because they're going to try to make a living at it. And those who are making a living at it aren't making a very good living, except for the really top outliers who you hear about all the time. The same is true in book publishing. You can probably think of several authors whose names stand out as people who are probably making a million dollars or more every year on their books, but that's super rare. In fact, one time I was at a conference and someone asked, how many authors in America do you think are actually making a good full-time living as writers? And the number that came up from several people asked independently was probably about a hundred. If we really believe that information should be free, that we shouldn't have to worry about copyright laws, that pirated books are okay to download and read, that people should just be writing stuff for us for free, then we're really limiting what's going to be able to come to the marketplace. Preston writes about a whole bunch of different results of this kind of thinking that information should be free. Among them, that publishers end up rejecting many books that they once would have published, and that they're publishing fewer risky books, books with minority voices, books that might be controversial, 
books that might not appeal to a wide audience, none of those are going to get published in a marketplace in which publishers can't make money off books and therefore their margins are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking every year. Some organizations like the Authors Guild have tried to do something about this. They filed a lawsuit against Google Books. Google Books was operating under this idea that information should be free and they were downloading books for free use online and they claimed that all of those books books were out of copyright, but that simply wasn't true. As uh, people went through and started to check, there were four million books that were still under copyright. The lawsuit was intended to get authors their fair share of that uh, information that was being put out there for free. The lawsuit was uh, ultimately unsuccessful, and so Google Books was able to download lots of copyrighted material that the authors of that material are never going to be compensated for. The idea, of course, behind Google Books, if you've ever gone on there, is that you don't get the whole book, but you can get big chunks of it. If you're actually going to read big chunks of someone else's book, you should have to somehow compensate the author for that information. If we're not willing to compensate authors for information, then authors aren't going to be able to make a living, and as Preston puts it, they'll have to find something else to do. Another pressure on the publishing industry, of course, everybody's heard about Amazon. Um, Amazon entered the marketplace, for those people who may remember back that far, as a bookseller. But Amazon never intended to make its business books. It just entered as a bookseller using books as a loss leader, meaning it never was gonna make money on the books. It was undercutting the cost of books in order to bring consumers onto the platform to sell them all kinds of other things. And you can see how that business plan has now played itself out. But the problem is that in the process, they undercut how the publishing industry was operating and therefore books were going for lower and lower prices. Now, I don't mean to be a total downer on this topic. There are certainly some positive things that have come out of these pressures on the publishing industry. It has had to learn how to update its business practices and adapt to the 21st century. The opportunity for authors to self-publish has opened up incredibly with the internet and authors as a result have some of them have been able to take control of their own content in a new way and get rid of the gatekeepers that were maybe shutting them down. So I don't mean to imply that this is all bad news, but it is important if you want to be an educated reader to understand what's happening in the marketplace. So some things are out of your control, but some things you can control. One of them is that if you have a local independent bookstore, as you probably know, you should be supporting that bookstore if you want it to survive because local independent bookstores are under huge financial pressures. If you don't have a local independent bookstore, then there's also a new platform called Bookshop, and I'll put a link to that below, that's helping to support independent bookstores with online sales. But I also want to leave you with a couple of suggestions about legitimate free places to get books online. One of them is Project Gutenberg. So Project Gutenberg has also scanned a lot of books and posted them online for free use. But the difference between Gutenberg and Google is that Project Gutenberg is only scanning books that are already out of copyright. Copyright law protects books that were published before 1978 for 95 years. So when they hit that 95 year mark, you'll see books that used to be under copyright now coming into fair use and then showing up on a place like Project Gutenberg. So if you're interested in reading anything that was published before the 1920s, it's going to be available for free. The other most obvious place to get free books is your local library. Go get a public library card if you don't have one already. Even though your library may not be open right now due to the pandemic, you can check out books on Hoopla and Overdrive, which are two online platforms that many libraries now give their patrons access to for free to check out pretty much any book that's available on the shelf or through interlibrary loan. So if you don't mind reading your books on a screen, there's no reason you can't borrow them from your own public library. These are the best places for you to go to get free books online so that you are not contributing to the problem of piracy and that you're doing your best to support authors 
who need all the help they can get. We want to make sure that authors are able to make a living so that they can continue to write the books that we want to read. Thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Better Book Clubs.